Hey guys, this is Jean-Claude and I'm officially back from Origins. I am very, very excited to get back to opening some decks. Whew. Had a lot of fun out there, got to stay... Oh, knocked over a few things. Got to stay with quite a few friends, had a great time. Uh, traveled out there with Jake from the Sanctimonious Podcast. Had a lot of fun with him as well. It was just a really, really fun time. Uh, the other ones are always connected to cons, but this was the first time I ever actually went and played some other games at. And yeah, I got to demo a whole bunch of different things. I might actually like a couple different board games, which I'll probably end up buying pretty soon. So if you have never been to a con, I highly suggest going to them. Especially if you like board games and all these other things. Like, there's just so much to do. So many different things to see. It was really cool. Alright, we're going to do what we did last time here. Unveil the houses very slowly. Untamed. Brabnar. Sanctum, okay. Nasima Station Naysayer. Hey, we got ourselves a Naysayer. Ooh, check that out. It's a pretty cool little Archon. You know what? I know this isn't what it's saying. I'm sure it's like some sort of telepathy, but I'm going to assume he's juggling four balls. We have, obviously, Sanctum, so we want some great capture creatures. We have Brobnar, looking for, obviously, the Ganger Chieftain combo. And an Untamed. I'm not sure what we're looking for in this set. I know there's a couple pretty powerful cards like Heart of the Forest. If you get like a key cheat, that can be a very nice little combo to have in your deck. Kind of slow though, not sure how I feel about it. Just because I like to play quicker games. And we are starting off with, what is this? It's Untamed, it's an Amber whenever you play it. Gravid Cycle, Omega, so you end your step as soon as you play it. Return a card from your discard pile to your hand. Interesting, very interesting. So Regrowth gets back any creature. Obviously, getting back your most powerful card that isn't necessarily a creature is a very good thing, so I like that. Pan, Pekka, Enga, 5 power. Creatures to the right of in the battle line get plus 2 power. Wow, that's a really good card. Nipple Grounds, it's an artifact. Amber every play it, choose a creature. For the remainder of the turn, that creature loses Taunt and Elusive. Rust Nar, 4 power. Fight, destroy an artifact. If that artifact had an Amber bonus, you gain that much Amber. Pretty cool. Persistence Hunting. One Amber. Whenever you play it, choose a house. Exhaust each enemy creature of the chosen house. That's a really cool card. Nox. He's three power. He gets plus three power for each neighbor it has. Okay, so we're hoping for quite a bit untamed creatures. So far we have two. Nah, and we have another Nox. Pretty fun. So you put these guys next to each other, and for sure that's six power. It makes them harder to take themselves out. That's kind of a neat little thing to think about. <laughs> and we have three fun. <laughs> Okay, imagine having three of these guys right next to each other. That's three nine-power creatures. That's pretty ridiculous to think about. Uh, I almost would love to see a fourth at this point. Okay, well, it's a key charge. Lose one amber if you do. You may afford to key at current cost. We all know what that does by this point. It's Fang House, three power, assault three, and hazardous three. Very nice. Oh, and two of those. Dusk Witch, one power, omega, and elusive, and your creature is interplay ready. Pretty hard to pull that off, but if you do, you can do some pretty sweet things. And now we have a rare, it's Vimos Lightbringer, six power, play, destroy each elusive creature. That might actually be really good in this set. There are so many two, one power creatures that have elusive, and you want to take care of them imme immediately. I mean, this takes care of a Dusk Witch. Actually, it takes care of a Dusk Witch. That hurts our own deck, dang it. Uh, luckily, it's rare. Um, we only have one of each in here, so. Not too bad. You just kind of play around it, right? Da, da. Of course, of course, we have two of them, right? I mean, still a great card. Kind of weird with the Dusk Witch, but that is actually a super interesting thing to have two of in a deck. I like this more than the Curiosity we opened last time, so that's pretty cool. The harder they come. Play, purge a creature with power five or higher. Very nice. Oh, okay, I got to play with this guy. This guy is absolutely insane. Four power, two armor, taunt. Hazardous 4, so that means all small creatures will die instantly when it goes to attack this guy. This guy's easily going to be able to take out like an 8 power creature. It is really cool. I love this guy. Sir Marrow's 4 power 2 armor. After your opponent gains Amber by Reaping, he captures it. Protect the weak. Amber whenever you play it, it's an upgrade. Creature gets plus 1 armor and gains Taunt. Healing Blast. Amber whenever you play it, fully heal a creature. If you healed 4 more damage this way, gain 2. That might work out pretty well with those Noxes. Oh, and there's 2 of them. <laughs> 3 of them. <laughs> Oh, I love how I'm like, oh, those work well with the Noxes, and we have three for three, right? 
Abed the Grim, he's four power, one armor. Play, capture three amber. Reap, discard one amber from him. Talk about a huge upgrade to Charette. This guy has one armor and he has a way to get rid of the captured amber. That is too good. A bond the armor smith three power. Other friendly creatures get plus one armor. As an action, you can give other friendly creatures another armor. Lion Botram, four power, deploy. His neighbors get plus two power. Very nice. Tireless Crag. Okay, this is a repeat from the first set. Seven power, he cannot reap. You may use him as if he belonged to the active house. And if your opponent has no creatures in play, you destroy him. Be very interested to see how he works in the set. Probably actually pretty good. Sound the horns, Amber Davy Plate, discard cards from the top of your deck until you either discard a Bribonite creature or run out of cards. If you discard a Bribonite creature this way, you get to return it to your hand. Very nice. Colf the Quiet, six power, he's elusive. Tremor, stun a creature in each of its neighbors. Two of those, okay. Pound, one Amber Davy Plate, deal two damage to a creature with a one damage splash. Been playing this card quite a bit, very good. And we have two of them, not going to complain about that. Grogan's eight power. He can only be used to fight flank creatures. Very restrictive, but still a decent card. Gauntlet of Command. Artifact, as an action, ready and fight with a friendly creature. Hey, Ganger Chieftain, five power. You may ready and fight with a neighboring creature. Give us the drum or not we had in the last deck. Ooh, it is not. It's Foozle. Five power. Reap. If an enemy creature has been destroyed this turn, gain one amber. I like our odds of being able to pull that condition off. First Blood, and that is the last card of the deck. And whatever you play it, it's Alpha. First thing you must do during your turn. Play. Deal two damage for each friendly Bromnar creature. You may divide this damage among any number of creatures. Okay. Um, let's go back through this deck. A little bit different to think about. We're going to have to check see how many elusive creatures we have because we're going to be killing them with both of our Lightbringers. But let's actually pull up the Amber first. There's three so far. We'll kind of count as we go. Four. Five, six, seven, maybe more. Eight. Okay, so eight so far. Makes that key charge pretty weak. Nine, ten, eleven. So we have eleven amber. Okay, kind of you might be able to count on at least one of these. That's so iffy. We'll just keep it at eleven. Let's see, let's go back through this a little bit. Protect the weak on those Nox might be really good because Nox just needs neighbors to be huge. So to give a Nox some armor and then protect some smaller guys is really nice, like a bond. I would love to put a bond there, maybe Foozle even next to it. Foozle's pretty good about surviving some fights, but it's there's no harm in making where it's even better. As a matter of fact, actually protecting a Baud is gonna be very nice too. So I'm pretty sure I'd like to have a protect the weak on a Nox. Get these two guys next to it, maybe even Sir Marrows. Make it where it's harder for our opponent to get, either get back their amber or harder to kill our creatures. That's pretty nice. This guy's, as I said, just really insane. I like having this sort of removal. Actually, purging creatures is so powerful. Making where you don't have to worry about it, because there's a lot of these games now, especially with these decks, your opponent's gonna be able to cycle through the deck, and you just, there's certain things you don't want to see again. I like this guy quite a bit. I didn't like him as much in the first set. Obviously, it's a powerful effect, but in this set, it seems super strong. He's six power. He's taking out a lot of elusive creatures. I don't think we had too many in here. We had Dusk Witch. We didn't have any other than Untamed. Let's see here. Oh, gosh. That guy's going to make those Noxes really huge, too. Talk about 11 power creatures. That's nuts. Actually, you might even just want to protect this guy. So put a taunt to the creature next to him. That's pretty insane. I like that we have an artifact removal. It's kind of conditional, though. Um, I mean, this guy has to survive, then also survive a fight. Mm, I mean, I feel like I'm getting less and less artifact removal inside of Age of Ascension decks. And that's kind of a shame, because I feel like it's still just as important as it always has been. Uh, a lot more other type of, like, controlling elements inside Age of Ascension. You have, you know, a lot of ways to be able to deal with creatures, which is great. But... As far as like artifact removal, I'd like to see a little bit more of that. Yeah, I didn't see any other elusive creatures, so luckily the Lightbringers are only taking out Dust Witch. That's not too bad. And there's a lot of different houses that these guys are taking out a lot of creatures, so I think this is a very powerful card. Um, this deck overall seems pretty weak. We don't have any explosive combos like you typically see inside Age of Ascension decks. It's just a nice pile of good cards, though. Um, so I think it's going to be fine. I think every time you draw a key charge with this deck, there's a good chance you're just going to discard it. Unless it's so late and you've already had like these three Noxes out and then maybe at least one other untamed creature. You can probably get yourself up to seven. There's a lot of turns we had. You start off with like three Amber, so that's not too bad. 
but it's definitely a nice early discard. We're not, definitely not trying to build up to something with the key charge. And yeah, so this deck, um, man, let's kind of look at the removal actually. So it has quite a bit. There's two. Well, more like, instead of just removal, just like creature control. So you got two, three, four, five, six. This guy does, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, look at all this. Look at all this board control you have. That's just nuts. Another one there. Yeah, this the set is just, it's so much different. It's a little bit harder to evaluate because we're just not used to evaluating it uh, in the same way that we did Call of the Archons. And yeah, so I, I do feel like the this deck is below average for sure if we compare the two sets. Um, it has some great cool effects, but it's just not going to necessarily win a lot of games. This deck will definitely be a lot of fun to play, but you need to make sure your opponent is playing a really fair game like you are. If I'm going to give it some sort of rating, it's below average. I I'm going to say maybe like D? God, that feels really low because it has such great board presence, such great board control. It's just, it feels like it's lacking something. I'm not sure what it is. There's going to be a lot of decks it does perform well against, but if I just kind of like compare how's it going to do against a, an average deck, I think it's going to underperform. All right, guys. Well, I thank you very much for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.